Hello, 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 and most welcome to the page on GBC News. This is where we do chit chatting. We get those who matter when it comes to sports development. Today, once again, we are putting our lenses on soccer, and this time we're zeroing into the ongoing qualifiers for the AFCON 2025. I know you've heard a whole lot of stories about the AFCON, GTV Sports Plus, GTV, Bodu TV, Garden City TV, Unique FM, always bringing you up to speed on whatever is happening. But today, I, I can confidently tell you that um, every group has finished with their four rounds of matches. But are you sincerely aware of the teams that are likely to qualify and the teams that have qualified, those that are likely not to go, and the big surprises and the upsets? So today we've gathered all the table. We want to give you the table, get closer to it so that you understand where the various teams are. They're left with only two matches to play for CAF to really know exactly the number of teams and the countries that will be participating in the Africa Cup of Nations. Where uh, is the fate of the Black Stars? uh the black stars we'll, we'll talk about them so we'll start off by zeroing in but in between that uh, i have a colleague here and um, he's a sports enthusiast he's an organizer but today he also shared his thought because he has been worried behind the scenes as to uh, what really is happening to the black stars and so he also shared his thought with us whilst he has some other information he'll be giving us you know when we talk about the circus cup one gentleman using football education to really change society and make sure that their youth really are good at what they do and uh, their potentials are really um, uh, materialized is here um lai is here yes mohammed lai is in the house and um, he helped me with the with the analysis and the thoughts as well so let me quickly go onto my screens now today i'll be dealing with you on my screen so let's go to uh, my screens now and so i'm starting from group a if if you look at it critically group a has tunisia Comoros, gambia and madagascar so uh, let, let, let me let me get you up to speed this is group a after four rounds of matches if you look at it uh, tunisia are occupying the summit with seven points Comoros are second with two points the gambia are third with five points and then madagascar two so if you look at it very well they are left with two matches everything is possible between number three number two and number one that can really seal qualification if you look at it six points are stick if gambia decides to win all their six um point pick all the two matches win all the matches they will add six three they will get 11. then it means that tunisia and Comoros, one of them will drop if it happens that Comoros decides to also win their last two matches they will get 12. it means that one of these will not go if tunisia decides to sleep and allow them to lose their last two matches it means that tunisia might not go because if these two teams pick their wins then it is done so this is how their parents look like and how the standings are so group a has tunisia Comoros, gambia and madagascar looking at it madagascar even if they win their last two matches will still get eight that eight the likelihood of these people losing games is, is really uh one out of ten and two if you look at it very well this is how it is but it's still possible for some teams to leapfrog the other so let me go to uh table number two so that's this so group b has a uh, morocco gabon central africa republic and lesotho if you look at it critically then where lesotho is if they even pick their last two games they win all their points they will add six to the one they will get seven somebody's already having seven here gabon and it's not likely that it will happen so here we know that lesotho might not be at the afcon same as central africa republic if they even win their two matches they will get nine and let's say these two groups so the possibility still lies within these two but can will morocco allow themselves to lose all their two matches will gabon not strive to go so that's how it looks like for group b the standings for group b let's go to group c now group c has egypt botswana kivet and mauritania and so if you look at it critically egypt currently we can say confidently that they've qualified they have 12 points so uh, they are likely they've gone and then Botswana says 333. Three, three. So I stick once again at six points. Can Mauritania pick the six points and get nine? Can Quebec pick the six points and get nine? Can Botswana uh, decide not to lose and win their matches? Then the two will go. So if you look at it very, very well, everything is possible in Group C for them if uh, football's logic really plays in. And so then we go. Let's go again. Group D, where there is trouble currently controversy decision as to whether nigeria will get all the points awarded for them because their game against libya they didn't play they pulled out because of off the field incidents remember that the nigerian team had to fly to libya they got there and the airport they landed was not the airport really that they needed and so their flight was changed destination was changed and so many will have because libya also says that um 
Nigeria treated them unfairly and so CAF is investigating now. So as it stands now, Nigeria still occupy the, the summit of Group D with seven points. And so if CAF rules that Nigeria have won that game, then they will deduct points from Libya, meaning that Libya might not go. And so if you look at it very well, or they decide to play it again, we'll see what will happen. If Libya manages to beat Nigeria, Libya will get four. They have two more games to play. If you look at it, it will be plus or minus. But there is Benin, there is Rwanda, as so well. Very, very tight. Africa Cup qualifies for Group D. So let's go to Group E. So E has Algeria. Algeria is having 12 already. So we can say boldly that Algeria have gone. Then we have Equatorial Guinea, Togo, and Liberia. If you look at it, um, this how it is. So we, we're still doing the pairing. So just for you to understand the Africa Cup of Nations, it will be live on GTV, GTV Sports Plus, Obunu TV, Garden City TV. Radio commentary will be on Unique FM. And so everything you need to know, and also on our social media handles. So you go there, you get more. But we just uh, refreshing your mind after four rounds of matches. We'll get to Ghana very soon. So this is how it looks like for Group um, E. Let's go to uh, the next one, Group J, Ivory Coast, Zambia, Sierra Leone, Chad. So these two countries are previous winners. You, you look at it very, very well. And so when you look at it, currently Ivory Coast are having nine. They, they left with six points to pick more. If they are likely to pick them, then they will go same as uh, Zambia. And then Sierra Leone, if you look at it very, very well, will Sierra Leone really find their scoring boots and then come back, will Chad do a magic be a party spoiler we cannot tell as a stance now but their last two games would decide so we move on to group h group h dr congo are currently uh winning all their matches four matches unbeaten they've picked all their wins over there they have 12 solid points they've gone uh guinea six tanzania ethiopia one so if you look at it very very well some teams are very very uh comfortable they are in the comfortable lead cruise control like they are Congo. So we move on. Now we come to Group I, Mozambique, Mali, Guinea-Bissau, Eswatini. So if you look at it, there is a head-to-head -head here, neck, 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 neck. Everybody, after four rounds of matches, have picked two, two wins, drawn two, yet to taste defeat. So you look at them, eight, eight points. Very, very close, Mozambique, Mali. And remaining two more matches, six points at stake. Will they be able to pick it? Guinea-Bissau, then Eswatini, who really will not be going in this group. Very, very close. So after the last but one game, we can confidently say that um, Team A will be able to. But if you look at it as a stance now, uh, Mali... Mozambique are likely to go. Now, we continue. Group J, Cameroon, Zimbabwe, Kenya, and Namibia. As a stance, I can close my eyes and say, even if you dash Namibia six points, they will not go. The reason is, all the groups, they are picking two out of all the groups, two. And so, Namibia currently doesn't have a point. So, six points plus, they will get six. If Kenya decides to also win, Kenya gets six, they will get ten. Still, Namibia will be where they are. This one has eight. And this one has 10. So if you really look at it, Namibia, no, 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 they won't go. But Cameroon are uh, confident that with a win, a draw, they can still sail through. Or they've even gone looking at what is really happening here. Then we continue. Let's go. Then Group K, Uganda, South Africa, Congo, Sudan. So you look at it and then how everything looks like. So South Sudan will not be going. They look at it very, very well. So still on it. And then uh group l l burkina faso senegal burundi malawi so if you look at it very very well senegal burkina faso are the hot kick even if you dash the rest those six points it will still not do anything so for this group we've seen them d faso senegal are through they've gone to the uh afcon so these are the qualified i'll come back to ghana don't worry i skipped ghana but i'll come back to ghana so qualified teams so far the first group we have morocco burkina faso cameroon ivory coast dr congo these are the countries that have booked their place already they are now thinking about uh which other players we can use we can rest the uh, main team and then build another team for the rest of them then the next teams that have qualified uganda senegal angola egypt Algeria, these groups. So if you look at it again, let me go back. Uh, five teams are here and then uh, another five teams are here. So 10 teams so far have qualified and they've sealed their progress. So let me go back to where the Ghana is, where everybody's asking me. So what is happening to Ghana? So let's go to group F. I skipped it for a reason. Group F, if you look at it very well, as we stand, stands now, Angola have won all their matches. Remember they started in a at the Barbara Sports Stadium, where the Black Stars dashed them that last minute goal, and then they won. 
Then they went ahead and won all their matches. Their four matches they've won. Now Sudan came here, we couldn't score. And then they went there and then the Black Stars gave another two cheap goals. Just dash them for them to really enjoy. So currently there is a um, victory, a uh, happiness in Sudan. Now, this is the, 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 the Black Stars everybody I'm talking about. This Black Stars team now, this Black Stars team now, that have failed to really glitter. Um, they've not been able to score goals and the strikers are there, they are not, whatever is happening, tactically, whatever is happening, this is where Ghana really lies. So let's do a small mathematics here. Six points at stake. If Black Stars picks all the six points, plus two, they will get eight. As it stands now, they cannot go beyond Angola. So we can say from this group that even if Angola should lose all two matches and Black Stars wins, the only points Black Stars will get, we will get eight. Currently, Sudan is second with seven points. If Sudan decides to draw all their two games, Sudan will get nine. Black Stars will still get eight. They can't go. <laughs> if Sudan decides to lose all their two matches, they will lose to Niger and then go and lose to uh, uh, Angola again. If they lose, that is it. If they lose, then the Black Stars will get hope. So currently, the hope of the Black Stars, even should they win all their two games, go and beat Angola and then uh, beat Niger, they will get six points. When they add it, they will get eight. Should Sudan decide and Kwesi appear and Ignatius, uh, the assistant coach, Fusu and the rest, decide that they will lose their two games, then they will give Black Stars the breathing space that, okay, we'll get eight and go. That's the stance now. With the posturing of Kwesi Apia and the technical team of Sudan, and then the players, and where they are, and the mood in Sudan, I don't think that Kwesi Apia and his boys will decide to lose all their two games. If they will not even win, they will play a draw. And two drawn games means that Black Stars are out, even if they win their games. So if you look at it very, very well, this is the fate of the Black Stars. Can it happen? Football doesn't follow logic. Can it happen? It's now scientific, but can it happen that Sudan will decide not to win any of their games and still remain seven? And then the Black Stars wins two matches, pick the six points, plus this one, and get eight and move with Angola. That's the food for thought here. So I have a brother here. <laughs> He's worried about what you uh, So that's why I, I reserve it. So uh, Mohamed Lai is in the house, uh, CEO for Accra Hospice Foundation. Mo, what's up? Cool, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Mo, I, <laughs> sh share, share some with us. I know you are, you are, you are bubbling up. You wish <laughs> it didn't happen this way. Sure, sure. Uh, Nobody wish. Your, your, your general way. impression. So have, are you disappointed at the Black Stars? For me, I'm disappointed because, you know, the Blaster carries every football foundation in Ghana, posting it to the world. So when our main soccer stars come make it up and we play with all these foreign-based players, the whole team, the whole uh, group, we have the best foreign players. You mentioned Kudus, you mentioned, uh, you mentioned uh, Jordan, you play in the top league in England and we can't beat a team like Sudan or Niger. And you have to suffer. You come like Ghana, where you say football, we play like Brazil of Africa. You can't, you can't just qualify in a group like so, this. So let, let's go back to the, uh, to the table shocking. again. So you are worried we couldn't beat Angola? Sure. Maybe let's say Angola is okay, but Niger and Sudan. <laughs> you don't tell me because Angolans, they have this kind of uh, francophone, francophone stuff. Yeah, they have there, Portuguese most of them, mode, yeah. so I understand that. But Sudan and Niger, you, you have no excuse. It's, it's a pity because so when, is it our defenders that not really? the defenders per se when ghana can't qualify you know this is our team we can't sell players too so it worries the football uh, uh, community and we are there so if our team the people will be going to angola and go to go and scout because they feel their football is stronger than ghana now i mean that's my worry as a football person so it's a shame that we can't we are struggling to qualify we have to do mathematics again to qualify <laughs> whilst angola or sudan will not do that in a football country like Ghana, everywhere we speak, we have more than everybody's a coach in Ghana, and we suffer to qualify for just Afcon. Uh, so, have you given up? I've given up already. <laughs> because if Sudan should score me too, did, did, did the Sudan really score you, or you you give them the opportunity? They lashed it from the start. They were attacking us, attacking us, attacking us. And they scored. We all watch. They came here, they defended well. The keeper was superb. We, we couldn't take our chances. We missed them all.
and went there in the two days. Football for you. They're on top. You can see the margins there. Seven to two. And we have even negative goals. So when I go to every score and get positives to but, but if you if you do the mathematics very well, if you look at it and you do the mathematics, it's okay, so we, we beat Sudan, we will we, we beat Angola. We beat Angola 2-0. And they are home. Keep counting. <laughs> we are here. <laughs> Niger comes back. Um, we, we, we come and play Niger. We go to Niger and go and play. And then we decide that. But we do here. We, we go there, we go and score them 3-0. We decide. And yes. they also decide. All, all of them are decisions. Good. So when we pick the six points, you are, you are talking about the minus three goals. So how do we clear the minus three goals and go? Brother Tio, let's be honest with ourselves. We've been shambolic. We can't make it out. We just have come to come back to the drawing board. I have always tried to say that if I get a platform to tell Kit, take the local base players. Let them play the qualifiers for us. Which, which local base players? Some as, as we speak now. Are you, are you impressed with the, the, the crop of players playing in the Ghana Premier League. Are we not enjoying the league? I'm enjoying the league. You're enjoying the league? Sure. Look at uh, Nations FC. They have two or three or four good players. Look at uh, Samantha's. They have some key players. Collect two, two, three or four players. Come them for six months. When you know the qualifiers are coming up, come them. These foreign players, sometimes they don't want to get hurt. So they'll come and just be touching the ball like that. But these players, they mean business. And you give somebody like $10,000 or $8,000 and you come and play something and go back and go and chase $100,000. The ones here who are suffering to go to the top, build them. When every distance comes, build them. When they, they qualify, take two or something to motivate them to, and add them to the profession. Fine, we understand. So they know every two or three years, maybe we are lucky, two or th some of us, two players will join the big stars. Simple. And motivate the team. That's all. Football. You don't, in this Niger, they're just playing with local players. So. Niger. That is what they have. That's have you have. seen have you seen a nigerian player playing the english Premier league before? good they don't have so if they don't have and we have strong teams as summer and cool and we can't select 22 players to play that they will go crack 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 these foreign players will not go crack 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 so are you saying that it is good to to rather use local players yes than... we have the camps. so uh, if sudan gets you think if sudan gets the opportunity we are having that you have players that are playing the top flight league you go to the french league one there are Ghanaian players there if you go and then Sudan are having what they have, you think they will use their home base players? Good. What they have, they will use it. But do you be surprised to sit back and watch the whole scenario and say, no, we need to pump more local players because they know the terrain here. This foreign player, I can tell you to be honest, Kudus is so superb. But did you see his superbility when he was playing? No. What he played for was he didn't play there. He's scared. He's, since I just started five, six matches, he wanted to get hurt. Excuses will come. They'll give you the excuses. But the local players will go hard on them. Look at the Sudanese. They are playing pick because they play at the early Lal and Co. They are here. They know the system. They will go hard. This foreign players will not go hard. Jordan will not take his leg. Kudos will not take his leg. So sometimes the GFA has to sit back. We love Ket. He's doing a marvelous job. He should put up the art and trust this young player. You can't play a league and you get a winner. You can't take one player or two or three or five into the blasters. What motivation are you giving the local players? Okay. Some of these are there. So, yes, that's, that's like, lie, lie is into football and stuff like that and education and stuff like that. So, he's worried. When he started, you listen to his comment. He says, oh, when it happens like this, uh, we can't sell our players. So, I'm coming to the last question before I come to your main issue here. Yeah. Any day, the Ghana Premier League is ongoing. It doesn't even end. Then the players that emerge as promising players, you guys sell them because you are player agent. You quickly sell them. And you are saying that we should still believe in the home base players. Whilst you know that these are the correct ones, you sell them. In other countries, they don't sell like the way we sell our players. We quickly shift them out and then say, okay, we are developing another one. Which of the current house of food players can make it into the, the, the Black Star setup here? You see, these are the issues. You mentioned some attacks because they played in Strachman, they played Champions League, Confederations Cup here and there. You, you feel that they can win. But donning the national colors and standing there, you feel that they have what it takes to do it? You know, I understand you very well. The packages for our league is very low. Like uh, when you win a league, you get about $500,000 or $400,000. Yeah, $400,000 in a CD. I understand. Teams are spending a lot. Even we in the Division 3, we're not getting it easy. Every year you have to make a sum of about 40,000 or 45,000 Ghana City going to this place. It's not easy holding up one alone. I understand why they are shipping out because they have to get money back to the system to run the clubs. If we are being sponsored like the way the European countries have it, like UK, uh, uh, TV rights and co are pushing the teams up 
before the season starts, teams are getting about $200 million in the coal. The power is there. Why would you ship your players? But here, every team has to struggle on its own. GF is giving pay now to the Premier League. The Division 1 are getting paid. What about the, the lower leagues? Even Division 3, you get one ball. Only one ball. You have to buy about seven, eight balls in addition. One ball costing about three hundred and city. The players are there today, and we've not eaten. You have to sell to make gains. So ours is different. Okay. They, they, yes, they, they have been supported heavily. We are not supported. Great. And so mm -hmm. that's that's the concern. Yeah, sure. Now uh, today you are here because you are doing two things or three things in one. Whilst you keep clubs, you organize peace events, stuff like that. You are not doing education. So viewers, Lai here is going to is organizing an education or something, something way, and I want him to really touch on it for me. So let me go back to my screens now. Lai, tell me what what really. Uh, brought this up. You said Accra Hospital. You are the CEO. You said you're supporting uh, child education. Blah blah blah. What 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 is it about? You do football more. Yeah. Why are you adding this one to it? Yeah, sure. Accra Hospital Foundation is my foundation, and I built it in to help communities, especially the slum communities, like where I'm coming from, Sabon Zungo. So you see, somebody. All my idea is to get a youth or get a foundation for them to leave this criminality. When you don't support the youth or you don't support the child, when they leave school. He's going to be a dropout, and the only thing he channels himself is to go into drugs where he feels he's okay. Because we're going to go, the guys to buy him food and stuff. We need to block all those areas to get a child back to school. Yes, I've done sports. Currently, I was here with this Hakis Peace Cup. And yes, the Hakis Peace Cup, uh, where you, you, you went to the chief imam. Uh, yes, I, I, I believe you, you, you follow us on our social media and also. So, um, he was with the chief imam and he has been with the chief imam. So these are some of the scenes. They were at the chief imam's palace. Chief imam blesses it. And then they go and play football and, and do so many things. So like, um, uh, you brought this thing up. Uh, walk me through. You said launching and then fundraising event. You want to support. You said empowering the less fortunate uh, yeah. with the gift of education. Um, you're doing it at Blakuma. Tell me more about it. Yeah, like I said, the foundation. I, I want to tackle sports, health and education. Okay. Sports have this Saki Spears Cup. Okay. And, uh, which last year, two players went to Nations FC. Yes. There are two players going to Nations. That's a, a, a success of You have two players that played in the Sarkis Cup. Which have, uh, they, they are now with Nations yes. FC. Okay. So somebody jumping from Division 2 and now he's playing the Premier League. It's an up, 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 up game changer. Now I want to come back to help the community. These are the kids, school kids. You can see in the, I went to the Turkish Embassy, seek their support and they supported some of the kids, about 50 kids with okay. dresses and shoes. Okay. Yes. Now, what I want to do is to try to solicit money, add my firepower to add it to get the youth some basics in school. Like you go to school, you know, some people don't have t-shirts, hey, shirts, uh, uniforms. Some don't have books, some don't have pens, some don't have bags, some don't have shoes. I'm just crying to the uh, corporate body to come and support individuals, come and support the government agencies, come and support so that we can just give these basics to the kids. They will find, some people don't go to school because they don't have books. Their parents can't afford books, simple books. Although we are running the, the, yeah. the free SHS. You, yeah. you still feel that your community, when you go around, you see the boys walking around and they tell you that because of books, they are not going to school. Yes, with the lower classes, this is primary, they don't, they don't have free SHS there. Free okay. SHS for SS. Okay. So we have to cushion them out there. And I've seen my community draining down because the kids are not going to school because I think the one thing which is motivating is the food they have been given in school, which is pushing one or two to go. But man's are in the house. When you can get him to just... So are you trying to say that at Ablikuma Central, uh, where you, you stay, Sabu Zungu itself, yeah. Are you saying that when you walk, you wake up in the morning and you walk and you see the children, most of them don't want to go to school? They don't go to school. There's no motivation power. What will they eat when they go to school? What will they, what will they wear? No, not every family has money to push their kids there. That's why I'm more concerned about raising them. You can see the targets are put in there. So about 5,000 kids. You said you want, to, you, you want you, 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 you are looking at 5,000 children. Sure. At Sabun Zungu. At Sab Sabun Zungu and beyond. And not beyond. only at, at my point. Beyond. Ablikma Central, Ablikma South, Ablikma West. Trying to support each, uh, each school I target. I can target a school and just go there, get 100 kids, we support them with books and bags, just take them out, we go to another school, support. Because I know what is happening in my constituency and even Accra as general. Mm -hmm. And other villages. My mom had an orphanage in one village called Osurasi, and I know what she did there. She has to almost care for everybody in the, uh, the village. Okay. When you go there, they still mention her name, Queen Our Foundation. Okay. So I'm touched by what my mom did. And I want to also emulate the same thing to help my people. So when, when are you doing this lunch and everything? I'm doing the lunch on Saturday, 1 p.m. Okay. at Ablecon Central, okay. former uh, Ablecon Central Municipal Assembly, okay. which I'm trying to invite. Uh, so everybody's mm -hmm. watching you. Yeah, we have just like 30 seconds. So, so just give them the message. Um, everybody can walk in. Yeah, everybody should walk in. There are numbers there you can support if you can't come. We all I need is to channel the energies to give support to the kids. 
I want them to, I want them to go to school to cut criminology. So we want to support the community so that at least we will benefit in future. We have to get it now and build a better foundation for the better future. That's all. Okay, so that's that's Mohamed Lai. Um, he is the CEO for Accra House Space Club. They, they are into football. They are into so many things. Now he's saying that they want to add a little bit to the education because the young boys and girls uh, in the area, especially Sabu, Zungu and its uh, surroundings, uh, most of them are not going to school at the basic level. Primary one, primary two, you look at them walking around and then at the end of the day, it is not even, you know, go feel no by So they will go and look for something else to do without the education. So he wants to catch them young and then help. So if you are out there and you can also support this lovely venture, please, uh, on Saturday they are doing it. And then later this, you can follow them. Are you on social media? Oh. And so uh, uh, which handles are you on? So that somebody watching us right now can start uh, maybe contacting you and then getting some more feedbacks as to what they should give you. So can you, where? So Facebook, fa Facebook across Space Foundation. So when you go to Facebook across Space Foundation, they can get everything there. Sure. Okay, so viewers, uh, we'll do that for Lai. Lai is here. Uh, he's a brother, but again, he's worried. <laughs> the Black Stars have caused him troubles because <laughs> if a man used to send one or two players, he can get more money to come and help the educational fund sure. than he's doing. But currently, as it stands now, the scouts will go to Sudan. <laughs> and go to Angola. They will not come to Ghana because the Black Stars are not performing. Let's cross our fingers and see. Do we believe in miracles? It's football about miracles. Or it's just about doing the right things. Or the mathematics work for the Black Stars. Only God knows. That's the page. So this is how we draw the curtains. Uh, we turn same time tomorrow. Have a lovely day.